My name is Mike Resso and I'm a Signal Integrity Application Scientist for Keysight Technologies in the Internet Infrastructure Group. I'd like to invite you to watch this snippet of our Keysight Educational Forum that we did in Santa Clara for DesignCon. And we're going to be showing snippet that preludes a full 40-minute seminar and I wanted to mention the title of this is Practical Signal Integrity Analysis, Both Simulation and Measurement. And so we have some nice basic foundational signal integrity topics and then we're going to delve into some more advanced analysis for hardware measurements and how to correlate to simulation. And if you're interested, follow the link and go watch the whole 40-minute video. And happy signal integrity. Thank you. Signal integrity is about the problems interconnects introduce and how to avoid them. First, we have to understand signal integrity with a case study, a failing virtual channel. And I'll talk about the three steps to solving any signal integrity problems. Well, number one, simulate the channel. Number two, find the root cause, like Eric said. And number three, explore design solutions. Here's a VS structure that I simulated. It, it actually consists of transmission lines. And let me tell you why. If I take a look at the stub over here, it's about 75 mils. If I do the math, given the data array in Nyquist, I'm taking the five times as the bandwidth and the wavelength using six inch per nanosecond as the propagation FR4. Our wavelength, our wavelength is about 75 mils. What does that mean? That means that entire wavelength is going to fit in to that stop. And by definition, when the voltage and current is changing with the physical length, that is definition of the transmission line. Now finally, after we understand the root cause, we can explore the design solutions. Solution one, or well, if the stub is a problem, hey, just throw it away. We'll just remove the stub. And let's, let's see what it does. Right now on the left, we have the stub, eye is closed. And we take away the stub, the eye should be open. And here we go, the eye is, is open. So we know now, again, for sure, the stubs are the problem. On solution number two, we can add equalization. That's fine, right? But if I'm doing decision feedback equalization, well, how many tabs do I, do I need? And that's a frequent question that, that we get, right? We do not know how many tabs, but here is another thing that would help us. Single pulse response. We'll be able to identify the number of tabs we need by looking at the single pulse response. And in short, the single pulse response is when we send a single pulse on the input with specific write time and data rate. And on the outside comes the single pulse response. And if I carefully mark the single pulse response as such, I name the maximum, the cursor given the one unit interval, I separate them, and the peak one I'll call the cursor, whatever is happening before the cursor is the precursor, whatever, whatever is happening, I call it the post cursor. I'll be able to identify number of precursors and post cursors I need to do equalization. Good, now I'm gonna let Mike do a rapid testing example of PLTS. Good morning. Uh, first I have to apologize for my voice. Uh, you can just imagine you're getting a, a demo from The Godfather. Isn't that what? <laughs> So uh, we, we tested a PCI Gen 5 device, and this tool, Physical Layer Test Systems, we have two input and two output, so it was a four-port VNA measurement, okay? So we got an S4P file, and so I'm gonna open up that file, and this is, this is the file here, and you can look at the data many different ways. Um, Multi-domain multi analysis is possible time domain, frequency domain, I diagrams, RLCG, or you can actually build a template that has multiple domains in one view. And, and this is what we have here. And so the S parameters are used as the base file, and then we extract all of the different domains. And as you can see, from, from just one S parameter measurement, you can get eye diagrams, 
Uh, you can get frequency domain information. Here is the insertion loss overlaid on the return loss. And you can drop a marker and start trying to find things like the half power bandwidth of your system. So if you want to move a marker to the 3 dB point, you can see that you've got about 4 gigahertz of bandwidth inside this. And likewise, you can look at time domain data. When you auto scale, you can look at the impedance profile, both forward and reverse. And there's also some, some interesting um, playing ground that you have in this environment. Um, of course, the, the TDR is like a step response, right? You launch a very fast edge into your device under test and you look at reflections, right? So, but you can also differentiate that and PLTS will warn you, well, okay, you can't use impedance to do the impulse response, but that's okay. But you can look at the impulse using the same exact data. And so here now you have the impulse response, okay? So after we found out that this standard eye diagram failed the original specification, we said, well, let's see what happens when we do emphasis, pre-emphasis or post-emphasis. And so here we added some FIR taps. It was two uh, post cursors, and you can see the eye opened up nicely. So this is multi-channel simulation built into PLTS. Now, it's not as powerful of a simulation engine as ADS. ADS does everything active components, passive components, very powerful. This pretty much, this tool will focus on the passive interconnect. And what does that mean? Backplanes, PCBs, cables, connectors, things like that. And then likewise, you can come in here and apply DFE also and see how much more it opens up. So, so using the two tools, simulation and measurement, you can import touchstone files or city files and export back and forth between these two platforms. And, and that is really what we're trying to do today with our hyperscale network infrastructure for the internet. We, we have to look at more ways to look at the data from different domains when we troubleshoot. So measurements, simulation, and, and doing multi-domain analysis will help solve design problems. So I'm, I'm not going to punish you anymore with listening to me. So I'm going to say uh, at this point, thank my co-author, uh, Tim, and also thank you for coming this morning.